I like that song, Brother Murray led us in. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus. I especially like the chorus. Jesus, precious Jesus. He's why we're here. In him we live and move and have our being. If it wasn't for Jesus, we might as well just go to the house, sit down and watch our TV and wait till our favorite TV shows come on. It's a shame that if we really think about it, where our time is really put and where it should be put. And I'm guilty. I can raise, I can raise both hands when it comes to that. Uh, turn with me to the book of Jonah for just a little while. This thought's been on my heart for some time. I've done a little research on some things here. And uh, just pray that uh, God would use it. It's his word. And just like that song says, just take him at his word. That song that we just sang, just take him at his word. And that's putting our trust in him. Chapter 1, it says, Now the word of the Lord came unto Jonah, the son of Amathea, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it, for their wickedness is come up before me. But Jonah rose up to flee unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord, and went down to Joppa, and he found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid, his fare, paid the fare thereof, and went down into it to go with them unto Tarsus from the presence of the Lord. But the Lord sent out a great wind unto the sea, and there was a mighty tempest in the sea, so that the ship was like to be broken. Then the mariners were afraid and cried, Every man unto his God, and cast forth wares that there were in the ship into the sea, to lighten it of them. But Jonah was gone down into the side of the ship, and he lay was he lay and was fast asleep. Thought he had nothing to worry about, did he? So the shipmaster came to him and said unto him, What meanest thou, O sleeper? Arise, call upon thy God, if it so be that God will think upon us that we perish not. And they cried, and they said, Every one his fellow, come and let us cast lots, that we may know for whose cause this evil is, evil is upon us. So they cast lots, and the lot fell upon Jonah. Then they said unto him, Tell us what pray thee for whose cause this evil is come upon us. What is thine occupation, and whence comest thou? Why is thou, is thy, what is thy country? And of what people art thou? And listen to verse 9. And he said unto them, I am a Hebrew, and I fear the Lord, the God of heaven, which hath made the sea and the dry land. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the word of God. Pray, Father, that you just use it, Lord, for your glory and for your honor, Father. And Lord, that's why we're here. In Jesus' sweet and precious name we pray. Amen. Certain things that jump out at him here and that here in, in verse 2, is he, God told him to rise and go. And uh, a, lot of, a lot of us, when God speaks to us, uh, we don't want to listen to what God's got to say because it's something that we don't want to do. And uh, I, and personally, like Brother Barry was talking about there the other night, how that when God was dealing with him to preach, he said, no, not me. Of all the people, you can't choose me. I was the same way. And I dealt with it for a long time. And there's more to it than God calling you to preach than God telling you to, to do something. And that is disobedience. We can disobey God in more ways than just preaching. And I, when I was, uh, door dealt with me for a long time to preach, and I even talked to Brother Roger. He was my pastor at the time. And I told him, you know, I, I, just, I just can't do it. And he said, if God calls you to do something, he'll supply the need that you have. Well, I still put it off for a long time. Then he preached a message one time where Mary said, whatsoever he saith unto you, do it. Boy, that broke me. Well, that right there. I went, I, went to the, I went and announced my call to preach that night. And I went to the altar that night and barely said, 
if he don't announce his call tonight, I ain't going to be able to go home with him. That's what she said, because she knows I've been miserable. That's the way it is. If you're a child of God, and God's got something for you to do, he'll supply the need, and you will be miserable until you do it. You can't get away with it. Gifts and callings of God are without repentance. You know, I have, I've had problems a lot. Most people know that I've, I've had problems, health problems, in recent times, and I still have them. People don't know sometimes. I sat right there two weeks ago and had a seizure. Now, I just sat there. I just kept sitting down there because it'll come and then it'll go. But see, sometimes I don't know what's going to happen. But that has been a hindrance to me, and I hate calling it a hindrance because God's called me to preach, and there's just certain times I, I just... I would I just say, you know, right now I'm not physically able. And listen, when you're physically, when you're physically hindered, and when you're mentally hindered, which I've got epilepsy, and it affects mine. I, she told me today, with my brother was talking about them going to the steakhouse, uh, to the old steakhouse, and I said, yeah, I've, I've been wanting to go down there. We've never been there. And she said, yeah, we have. See, part of my memory's gone, and so I have times where I just forget what I'm, which, which a lot of men do this. I get my, lose my train of thought, and it goes away. But getting back to Jonah, God told him to go, and basically when he went the, when, when, when Jonah went the other way, he went exactly the opposite of where God told him to go. Just exactly the opposite. So you ain't never going to get along with God from now on if you go against him. If you say no and you go the other way, that's, that's, that's going to be, you're going to have a problem. But here, and he said, the Bible says that he went down, that he went down to Joppa. And that's what happens when you don't do what the God, when God tells you to do. You automatically go down spiritually. Amen. You're not going to get along with God or disobeying him and, and doing what. But I, I did, some, now there's some different statistics on this, but, uh, one of the statistics and that I, the information where I got it from said it was 700 miles to Nineveh. Okay, to go to Tarshish, it was 3,000 miles. So he was going to, instead of going 700 miles to where God wanted him to go, he was going 3,000 miles to get away from where God wanted him to go. And we all know the story of Jonah and the, 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 the big, great fish that God had prepared for him. We know that. Know that how that God spit him, that the, the whale spit him out onto the ground. We know all that. We've heard it all. But I want to go a little deeper to, to what God has showed me in this. That's like that, that means if he, if he would have went, if Jonah would have actually went all the way to Tarshish, then that means he would have been 3,700 miles away from where God wanted to be. But he really wasn't 3,700 miles away. All he had to do was get on his knees before God and confess to God and then turn and turn and go to where God wanted him to be, whether no matter how long it took him to get there, his heart was right with God whether he, before, way before you get to where you, God wants you to be. That's where it comes here. It all comes down to our, rela our relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. It every, every bit of it does. Everything that we do in life, everything that we handle in life, it all revolves around our walk with the Lord Jesus Christ. And I'm, I've not walked with him close. And like Pastor says about prayer, I've been playing a lot and not praying a lot. Guilty, guilty before God. He knows. What, what I don't understand is we can, we can say things, we can say to other people, knowing it's not the truth. You're just lying to yourself and lying to those people, but God already knows before you even open your mouth what you're going to say. He knows the thoughts and the intents of our heart. You know, he, he tells people to, to, to go to the mission field. He tells people to go to, go to the prisons and preach, to the jails and preach. We used to have Maranatha. One of the, uh, one of the things I really missed when we went to, up at Maranatha, the elderly people weren't able to come to the house of God for some reason or another. Said so we would we would go out to them and have cottage prayer meetings. That's a, a gone. I I don't know of anybody that has cottage prayer meetings anymore, and we would have some good times having cottage prayer meetings. People just loved it, and go to the nursing homes 
Well, I'd go to nursing homes, and them, them, those people would just, they would just cry and go on. And they, they loved the Lord, went to the jails and preached, went to the streets and preached. See, God has a mission field that is bigger than any, it, our imaginations. You know what a mission field is? Handing out a track, telling people Jesus loves them. That's a that's a that's a mission field. So if we if we want to hand out if we don't want to hand out a tract and God tells us to, we're just we ain't no different than Jonah. We're just telling him no. We're telling telling the God of all creation no. Who are we? Who who do we think we are? We're we're only flesh and blood. I understand that. Boy, it goes in, it goes in much deeper. It's what's in our heart. It's what's in our soul. It, it, we, just like I said, it's in Him we live and move and have our being. Do we really, do we realize that? That the God of all creation lives inside us, the Holy Spirit. You know, when, when the Word of God is preached and, and it's, it's, God puts it out there and the Holy Spirit directs it to every heart that's listening. Everybody that's listening out there, the Holy Spirit is talking to them and tell them and give them exactly what they need. He does that. That's how the power of the Holy Spirit of God. But anytime you get away from God, you're going to go down. That's all. That's that's just the way it is. But listen here in verse number ten. He says, "Then were the men exceedingly afraid and said unto him, Why hast thou done this? Uh, for the men knew that he fled from the presence of the Lord because he had told them." Then said they unto him, What shall we do unto thee, that the sea may be calm unto us? For the sea, for the sea wroth and was tempestuous. And he said unto them, take, up, take me up, cast me forth into the sea, so shall the sea be calm unto you. For I know that for my sake this great tempest is upon you. He's saying, It's my fault. And you know we get th- we get things and we think we we try to blame other people. He didn't blame it. He said it's my fault. He said it's my. We need to own up to it, church. When something's our fault, we need to say it's our fault. If it's somebody else's fault, they need to. But people will not do that. People have. They are so proud today. They won't just. They won't say, tell the truth. They won't tell the truth. And that's that's what that's going on here. He knew, he knew that it was his fault, nobody else's. Nevertheless, the men rode hard to bring it to the land, but they could not, for the sea wroth and were tempestuous against them. They tried to handle it theirself. How many of us have ever tried to handle something ourselves? That's what these men do. Even though the, he told them what the remedy was, he still. They still tried to do it themselves, and they still couldn't do it. We cannot do it ourselves. Amen. We have to have the help of the Lord. And I like this right here. Wherefore they cried unto the Lord and said, We beseech thee, O Lord, we beseech thee, let us not perish for this man's life, and lay not upon us innocent blood, for thou, O Lord, hast done as it pleased thee. So they took Jonah up, Jonah and cast him into the forth into the sea, and the sea ceased from her raging. He was just they done he done it just the, they done just as what Jonah told them that they needed to do, because Jonah knowed it was his fault, and he said no that this needed to be done. Another thing I want to I want to uh, in another scripture I was reading there in in uh, Genesis 22 about Abraham. And the Bible says that uh, uh, Abraham believed God and it was counted to him for righteousness. Another part of the Bible, I can't exactly where that is, says to, to obey is better than sacrifice. Well, Abraham, God told Abraham to go to that mountain and Abraham was faithful to go. And he went there and the Bible says he took his, his, his ass and he took it and the, the wood on and then he, he, when he got there to the mountain, he told the... He took two lads with him, and he told him, he said, just abide with the ass. And he went to yonder, and he, he told the, the other young men, he said, and I, will, I and the lad will return. If that ain't faith, I don't know what is. 
He knew that God would let him bring his son back somehow, some way. But I heard a message one time, and I, I think about this. I think about this man quite a bit. And he preached a message on what these two men, to see the importance of these two young men, they did exactly what Abraham told them to do. They abide with the ass. And when he came back down there, they were there right where he left them. Simple faith. He put that faith in them two young men to, to do what he told them to do, to stay right there, with abide with the ass. And when he came back down there, that's where they were. They did exactly what he, they were supposed to do. Do we do exactly what we're supposed to do? Mm. How many? If you examined yourself and you thought, how, how, many, how often do I really, really, really do what, exactly what God tells us to do? See, if we, our relationship is right with the Lord and we're talking to Him and we're having fellowship with Him, we should be hearing His voice every day. And he should be telling us things every day. We should be learning and learning and learning and learning. And if we're not learning, it's our fault. Just like it was Jonah's fault, it was our fault. We can't blame anybody. If we're not having fellowship with the Lord, it ain't, it ain't, no, it ain't Brother Roger's fault or Brother Barry's fault that I'm not having fellowship with the Lord. No matter what, if you, any of you are not having fellowship with the Lord, it's, it's not my fault. If I'm not having fellowship with the Lord, if I'm not walking with the Lord, it's not any of your fault. We need to own up to it. It's always going to be our fault and not blame anybody else if we don't have the right relationship with the Lord. That's it. That, that, that's, that's, for, that's in a nutshell. Our relationship with the Lord is the most important thing we have in our life. I know the relationship I have with my wife. She knows me better than anybody except the Lord. 47 years of marriage. And she knows right when to... Right, she, she, she can correct me in the, right, in the, in the, in the sweetest way. <laughs> she, she's, a, she's a jewel. She really is. I know she's... She don't like me going on like this. But that's why God gave her to me. Because God knowed that one day, when I, right before I turned 62 years old, that she's going to have to drive me around. She's going to have to get my medicine ready for me. And all this stuff. God already knew it. And he chose the perfect wife to do that for her. There's a lot of men... I've seen how that their, their 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 relationship with their wives. I wish everybody could have a relationship like me and my wife do. I really do. But our relationship with the Lord is way more important than that. It really is. See, a relationship. Do you really realize that we have a relationship with the Lord? Whether it be a good relationship or we have a bad relationship. Or we're just we just satisfied with how it is. Like that song says, Who moved? <laughs> the Lord the same place he's ever always been. He's 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 there. He's he's faithful. He is faithful. He has never let me down. And he has showed his grace and his mercy to me. When the Bible says his grace is sufficient, his mercy endures forever, boy, I can, re I, can, I can relate to that. I look at my life and I start, why am I still here? I'm, and I'm 67 years old and I don't know how I got this old. I really don't. I really don't. When I was, when I was young, I, couldn't, I could not see myself 40 years old. I couldn't. And the Lord, the last 38 years, we started going up with Beverly and I were 29 years old. We started going to to Maranatha with Brother Roger. He was our he was our first pastor, and we grew under him tremendously. We didn't know nothing until we started going up Maranatha. We didn't we didn't know nothing. And uh, I love my brother. I love Brother Roger. He's been a blessing. And you can ask him. Beverly and I 
went through some hard times with him, and we've stood by him 100%, because we know he's a man of God. But our relationship uh, to, with the Lord is the most important thing. It's the most important thing. Let me see if I can find this one thing right here. I'm going to read this to you. This is Samuel speaking. He says, If you will fear the Lord and serve him and obey his voice and not rebel against the commandments of the Lord, then shall both ye and also the king that reigneth over you continue following the Lord, the Lord your God, but if you will not obey the Lord, the voice of the Lord, but rebel against the commandments of the Lord, then shall the hand of the Lord be against you as it was against your fathers. Mm. Tell you, church, I want to be on God's side. I want to obey Him. Because when you don't obey the Lord, you are a miserable person. And that ain't just about going, it ain't just about uh, God calling you to preach. It's what you do and what's what God wants you to do. It's about that fellowship and communion you have with God. That's what's important. Father, we thank you for the word. Lord, that you give us, Father, this little time, Father, Lord, in order we can come in your house, Lord, God, and gather together, Father. Lord, we love you tonight, Lord. We just bless your sweet, holy, righteous name. In Jesus' sweet name we pray. Amen.